Hello everyone, in this video we are just going to see in detail about the floating point data type in C language. Let's get started. So most often this float data type in C is useful for storing decimal point numbers to memory and it will be holding a maximum size of 4 bytes in CPU memory and it is most often useful for storing decimal value numbers and its range varies between minus 1.2 into 10 to the power minus 38 to positive 3.4 into 10 to the power plus 38. So it deals with a very very small number of 1.2 minus 1.2 into 10 to the power minus 38 and maximum number that can be stored is 3.4 into 10 to the power 38. So it's a huge number right and it is also a very very small number when compared to any other number. So for storing these kinds of numbers into memory you cannot directly convert this kind of number into binary format for storing this number because if you do so it will be a very very tedious process and it is also difficult for us to store that number into memory within 32 bits of CPU memory. So it will be uh, not necessary for storing such a big number and also for storing such a very small number right. So for making the process simpler what it does is it will be splitting the floating point number into two different parts one is mantissa another one is exponent so the floating point number is expressed into plus or minus mantissa into 2 to the power exponent so in this format the floating point number is subdivided into two different parts one is the mantissa and another one is exponent and then the mantissa is stored in one part of memory and exponent is stored in another part of memory. And then when you multiply these two, you will get the floating point number. And let us assume that this is the 32 bits of memory in CPU for storing a particular floating point number. And this 32 bits of memory is subdivided into three different parts. One is the sign bit, exponent and mantissa. And the leftmost MSP bit single bit is nothing but the sign bit represented in red color and then following that 8 bits are useful for representing the exponent of floating point number following that rest of the 21 bits are useful for storing the mantissa segment of the floating point number and among these three the sign bit is as usual useful for indicating whether the number is positive or negative that is when the value of the sign bit is 1 it means the number stored is a negative number and if the value of sign bit is 0 it means the number stored is a positive number and if you take the mantissa component it actually has a total number of 22 bits among which 22 are represented above and among the 22 bits, the MSP first bit of the mantissa is always 1 and it is hidden in the floating point number. Just remember the mantissa is totally having 22 bits of storage locations among that 21 is only visible within the 32 bits of data and in that 22 bits, the MSP bit of mantissa will be always 1. We will be using this bit while calculating our decimal point number. So floating point numbers are not directly stored into memory after converting it into binary format. So it is very very difficult for us to explain you how this number is stored in memory step by step from here. So what we will do is we will take this number into hexadecimal representation and then we will do the reverse process of how it is stored in memory. That will make the sense very very easier for you to understanding how the numbers are stored in memory. So let's see 
what is the hexadecimal representation of this number into memory so this is the hexadecimal representation of this number 10.5 that is 0x01 a8000 so let me just represent this number into binary format so this is the binary representation of this number you can clearly see in the 32 bits of memory the value shown is nothing but 0x01 a8000 in this the exponent is nothing but 0000 00011 that is nothing but 0x03 in hexadecimal and also 3 in decimal and the mantissa is nothing but 0101 0000000 it goes on like this and as I said the mantissa 21 bits are available right over here and 1 bit is hidden among the 22 bits that is the MSB bit of the mantissa is hidden and I am just adding that MSB bit to this mantissa so it becomes 1.01010000 it goes on like this and adjusting the mantissa to the exponent that is I am just multiplying this mantissa with 10 to the power 3 because the exponent is 3 so it becomes like this that is 1010.100000 it becomes like this and now let us try to convert this number right over here into decimal format the format of the number right over here is binary format and now we are just going to convert this number into decimal format that is the usual number format and before that the first step that you want to do is you just want to split this number into two different parts one is the numbers available to the left of the decimal point and another one is the numbers which are available to the right of the decimal point and to the numbers to the left of the decimal point let's take the first number that is nothing but 0 right over here and we will multiply this number with 2 to the power 0 as we have done right over here and then we will take the next number to the left of this 0 that is nothing but 1 and we will multiply this number with 2 to the power 1 as we have done right over here and uh, let's take the next number which is also 0 and we will multiply this 0 with 2 to the power 2 and uh, on taking on the next number that is the final number 1 we will multiply this final number 1 with 2 to the power 3 and when you evaluate this expression right over here that is the expression for converting the binary number into decimal format we will get 0 because 0 multiplied by anything right over here is 0 and here also we will get 0 because 0 multiplied by anything is 0 but here 1 into 2 to the power 3 is nothing but 8 in decimal 1 into 2 to the power 1 is nothing but 2 in decimal so 2 plus 8 is 10 in decimal so this is how we got the value 10 right over here on solving this expression and taking on the numbers which are available to the right of the decimal point let's take the first number that is 1 and we will multiply this number with 2 to the power minus 1 so this is the difference for processing the numbers which are available to the left of the decimal point we just want to multiply those numbers with 2 to the power 0 1 2 3 etc for the numbers which are available to the right of the decimal point you will process the data by multiplying it with the numbers 2 to the power minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 etc so this is how it goes on so we will process it 1 into 2 to the power minus 1 and we will take the next number 0 and we will process it so 0 into 2 to the power minus 2 and then we will take the next number which is nothing but 0 again so 0 into 2 to the power minus 3 we will stop it right over here because the exponent value is 3 so when you process this equation 
this will become 0 0 multiplied by anything is 0 and 0 multiplied by anything is 0 this will be also 0 and 1 into 2 to the power minus 1 is nothing but 1 by 2 so which is nothing but 0.5 so 0.5 is the result of this expression so when we add this 10 with 0.5 we will get 10.5 as the result and since the sign bit of this number is 0 or having the value to be 0 this is nothing but a sign of positive numbers stored in memory so the number stored is positive 10.5 so this is how a positive floating point number is stored in memory by splitting that number into mantissa and exponent and this is how you can calculate and take the data out from that memory or this is how the CPU calculates and fetches the data that has been stored from memory so this is how a floating point number is stored in CPU memory and now let's take another number that is negative 12.5 number and let's understand how it is stored in memory so the hexadecimal representation of this number is nothing but 0x c148000 let's convert this hexadecimal number into binary you can see the binary representation is shown in 32 bits right over here below that hexadecimal number and among these 32 bits the exponent is 1000010 that is 130 in decimal and when you subtract this number with maximum of 127 8 bits you will get 3 as the result so the exponent value is again 3 and the mantissa is nothing but 1001 it goes on like that and when you add the msb part of the mantissa that is hidden in this 32 bits i will get 1.1001000 goes on like this and when you adjust the mantissa as per the exponent that is when you multiply this with 10 to the power 3 the mantissa becomes 1100 dot 1000000 it goes on like that so now our process is very very simple we just want to convert this binary number into decimal format for representation so let us split this number into two different parts one is to the left of the decimal point and another one is to the right of the decimal point to the number which is coming from the left of the decimal point we will take the first number that is available on the left of the decimal point that is 0 and we will multiply this number with 2 to the power 0 and the second number to the left of the decimal point that is also 0 we will multiply this number also with 2 to the power 1 and again we will take the next number that is 1 and we will multiply the next number 1 with 2 to the power 2 and the last number which is also 1 we will take that and we will multiply it with the number 2 to the power 3 and when you resolve this equation right over here this will become 0 this will become 0 and this will become 2 to the power 2 into 1 4 and this will become 2 to the power 3 into 1 which is nothing but 8 so 8 plus 4 is 12 in decimal so this is how a number is converted into decimal format from binary format and to the number that is available to the right of the decimal point we will take the first number that is nothing but 1 and we will multiply this number with 2 to the power minus 1 and the second number is taken that is nothing but 0 and it will be multiplied with 2 to the power minus 2 and the third number is again taken which is nothing but 0 and it is multiplied with 2 to the power minus 3 we will stop here because the exponent value is 3 so we will stop the process right over here and when you process this expression 0 into anything is 0 right over here 0 into anything is 0 right over here and 1 into 2 to the power minus 1 that is nothing but 1 by 2 is nothing but 0 
0.5 in decimal and when you add the 0.5 number and 12 you will get 12.5 as the result of this expression so this is how a binary number or binary floating point number is converted into actual decimal part so number to the left of the decimal point is multiplied with 2 to the power 0 1 2 3 etc and numbers to the right of the decimal points are multiplied with 2 to the power minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 etc so this is how the conversion happens for converting the binary number into decimal number and since the sign bit of the number is 1 this number is a negative number so this 12.5 is nothing but minus 12.5 so this is how and negative numbers are also stored in memory of floating point data type numbers okay now let us try to define and declare float data type variables in c language so the syntax for declaration of float variables is also the same like what we did for int and char the same syntax is applicable for float variables also uh, the syntax is you just want to provide the data type name and following that after the space you just want to provide the variable name so now here i am just going to write float in place of data type name and then give a space and here you can provide the variable name i am just providing the variable name to be one and to this float variables either i can directly initialize any value right over here as i mentioned the float data type variables are most widely useful for storing the decimal point numbers or real numbers so i can store like 7.5 in this variable one or what you can do is you can do the loading of data right over here neglecting the initialization part right over here you can do both you can either follow any one method for loading the data to any particular variable either you can initialize the variable in the same line where you have declared and defined the variables or you can do that later uh, anywhere else in your program as per the requirement of your application and for retrieving back the variable value from float you just want to use the identifier first we just want to use the identifier percentage f here i am just going to provide the value or the variable name onm1 so now the output of this program will be variable 1 value is 7.5 let us test this program i am just running this program you can see the variable 1 value is 7.5 and in the similar fashion you can load a negative number also to the variable you can see the variable one value is minus 7.5 so in this manner you can declare and define float variables in your program for storing real numbers in those variables and you can utilize these float data type based variables for storing real numbers in your program so i hope you understood how floating point numbers are stored in memory and also how floating points are useful in storing decimal point numbers in memory and also few other characteristics of floating point data types in C. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching.